Hello and welcome to the show. We're back on Beam NG Drive. Well, taking some vehicles around the Proving Ground circuit, driving them till destruction. And we start with somewhat of a legend from this series. Uh, this is the Regency. Now, the reason why it is so well known, uh, this was the first vehicle to ever have the kind of rear axle fall apart, what came, came loose. It drove for a couple of laps, bouncing around with the rear axle that was uh, moving on its own, not really attached to the car. Very, very entertaining. Now, we saw the Moonhawk actually do that a little bit um, on its run. Admittedly, it only lasted a couple of corners, but could that be something we see again? Maybe. Kind of hoping so, or hoping for something spectacular from the Regency. Oh, good God. Okay. <laughs> see why the rear axle fell apart. It's very bouncy going on back there. That's kind of alarming, but there we go. I guess we will deal with that uh, however we can. While the rear axle thing was funny when it happened before, my main concern with this car is it's the drive shaft, really. Uh, front engine, rear wheel drive, very long car, so a long drive shaft going on here, and we've, this circuit kills drive shafts. The landing of the jumps are in such a way that they do a fair, fair amount of damage, and that's often bending the chassis. You bend the chassis to the point where the drive shaft is no longer able, and the drive shaft snaps basically. That would be my biggest concern with this with this car. Traditionally, who knows though? You never really know what's going to happen with this series. Well, with these cars, some vehicles just keep going uh, despite huge amounts of damage. And uh, this is quite a long car, so I've got to be a little bit careful going through the spinners. Uh, we are through, no problem. Uh, for the first time, I mean, there's not really any damage, so to speak, on the vehicle. We went a bit too far to the inside. What can we do across this jump? What is it going to be doing? And this is the this is a custom version of the Regency, so it's got a little bit more power than some of the base versions. Uh, we should be good to make this jump quite nicely. Yeah, that's pretty good through the air. Ooh, radiator leaking on the landing. Not really what we wanted. In fact, temperature shot up very quickly on this car. That's not ideal. Uh, overheating, of course, is always a danger of cars going out from that one. It hasn't generally been as much of an overheating circuit. The shallow grave section of the water does help as it cools the car down. Um, but yeah, this has already got quite warm so far. Over... Oh God, the Dover jump we had. I mean, it, it looks awful. The car is really shaking about a lot on these landings. Suspension is still all in one piece, for sure, but it does look... It looks horrific as it's hitting the ground here. This is another oh, nasty, nasty jump for the suspension to be dealing with. Of course, these old cars... I call it wobblematic suspension, but these old leaf springs, much softer cars, are generally quite good around here. It takes a lot to kill that suspension. When it goes, it goes spectacularly wrong, but it takes a lot more to kill it than the modern vehicles in general. Not always the case. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Oh, we've lost a front wheel. Front right is gone. Uh, now, to, okay. So, to be fair to the car, I hadn't realised it was gone until it was too late. Uh, so, while technically it missed the corner because it wasn't steering, it does still have some form of steering. So I will give the car a chance there in uh, being removed, because it can still turn left. That was more me figuring out what the car was capable of, rather than the vehicle failing completely from steering. It is going to be now difficult to steer it around the place. Um, I mean, the spinners are probably the biggest concern here. This car is it's a big car, this one, and when you have this trying to go through the spinners when it doesn't really turn left. That could be a problem, uh, pretty much. It turns right, I would much rather that front wheel come off. <laughs> you know, I'd, although immediately if you do that, then the front of the car drags along the floor, and that then runs risk of damaging through some sections. The water has helped cool us a little bit, even though I don't have very much steering to get my car into that section properly. Uh, we're going to be using the handbrake quite a lot, I think, here, to help get the car around these corners. Oh, come on, Regency. There we go. Okay, the wheel's actually sort of just twisted enough to let us make the corner. This is not quite as bad as we saw from... What was it we had the wheel really fighting us last time? I've slipped my mind. But uh, we have had a few cars where the wheel just really fights. It just gets twisted under and it's almost impossible to drive. This is annoying, but not completely useless. The, the spinners are a concern. Oh, the SBR4, that was the one that the wheel just gave up completely. This is the problem part now. Uh, can we actually get you into the spinners? Yes, change direction. Okay, actually got through the spinners pretty well. I've had cars that are fully healthy struggle uh, about as much as that. So it's got through the spinners without too many issues. That is good for the car. Now, the problem we're going to have is I now can't go as quick across this next jump. And 
Well, if we're slow across the jump, who knows where we're going to land. Oh, and the car's being dragged around, of course, by that flapping wheel. It's a big hit on the front of the car. I mean, it's not going to do any more damage to the front right. We just can't afford to lose the front left. The front left wheel is now the most important bit on this car. Uh, that is the bit that's keeping us going. The engine is... Oh, the overheating might actually get it. <laughs> the engine torque is reduced. The engine is in the orange. Well, the lights come on. Uh, the temperature is getting dangerously high. I can't really carry... I mean, I'm not even, have, I'm not even able to drive this car fast because it simply doesn't turn. The coolant's overheating. Uh, we could do with that water section any time right about now. Can't take any speed over that jump. So Dover, we're just landing smack on the nose of the car. Thankfully, I mean, it's quite a big overhang at the front. So we kind of get away a little bit with that. Oh, the engine's really poorly now. We will bounce across these jumps. These jumps can be punishing to cars. We're now much slower. So it's not really doing all that much to the uh, to the Regency. Temperature is all sorts of alarm bells going off now. It's going to overheat. There's no doubt about it. It's whether it can get to the shallow grave to give us a little bit longer. Or whether it's going to snap something. Oh, I think that engine's gone. That engine's gone. It's so slow accelerating now that... Uh, it might make it to... That's the engine gone, actually. I'm going to stick it in neutral, let it coast as best I can. But that's all the engine had in it. No rear axle failure for this car this time around. No weird hopping about. Um, that wheel still got steering. What's got... What, had, huh? The front wheel fixed itself. What the hell? <laughs> the front wheel has actually got some steering suddenly going in with it. Huh. It was, it was in place for a little bit. It's come grinding to a halt across the speed bumps uh, after the engine locked up and, and seized. But there is kind there was kind of some steering going on for a little bit. Maybe it was just with a way... That, regardless, it lost the front wheel and made it difficult to drive. But I think even regardless of that, that was going to overheat quite quickly. So, yeah, big catastrophic I guess radiator failure. Very, very fast overheating on this car. And that would be the end of the Regency. Up next, we have got another vehicle that traditionally has been pretty damn strong when it comes to these destruction circuits. The Grand Marshal is uh, going to have a run. Now, this is the, the V8 Sport version. Again, kind of a bit more of a mid-spec uh, of, of Grand Marshal, which is generally what I've been keeping to so far. Uh, I mean, this, this car has been, has been very strong in previous outings in these kind of circuits in general. It takes a lot to kill the Grand Marshals. Uh, oh, although that didn't really help matters. I'd rather it didn't quite bounce that much. Um, I mean, my concern with this one, drive shaft would traditionally be the, the issue again. Quite long car, front engine, rear wheel drive. That being said, the Grand Marshals drive shaft is normally pretty strong. I don't remember really ever having too many issues with it. Steering, I think, has killed it a couple of times before. We'll have to wait and see. Overheating is always possible. It just depends on how and where it ends up going. Oh, that's a big slide. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm expecting some good things from this car. Uh, we have got Toblerones coming up. It's not really had too much issue. We landed on the nose a bit heavy across those tabletops, but nothing massive again. The Toblerones have not really done anything. Uh, the front bumper is in a little bit of an awkward place, but nothing too terrible. Uh, there we go. Carry good speed on the way in. Get it slowed for that change of direction. No real problems at all through the spinners. We weren't expecting anything to go wrong with this car, particularly on the first, especially on the first lap, we've got full accompaniment of steering really, so that's fine. This jump here is where we could see, oh, car, get back under control please, we could see issues, lands a bit heavily on that front corner, has that lost a wheel? I think it has, you know. Nope, nope, okay, I thought it was flapping around, nope, the front right wheel is still attached, it's still got full steering, that's what we like to see. Yeah, try and get us, I guess, it's still, it's powerful rear wheel drive on dirt, you know, you can get in trouble with that back end was moving around as we take him towards that jump. Dover, next we're going to slide towards it if we can get straightened up. Oh god, almost overcorrected there. Got straightened up on the landing of Dover. The car is in one piece still. We've lost a bit of body work. I mean, that's okay. We don't really care too much about that stuff coming off at the moment. Uh, there's a slight pull to the steering. It's pulling a little bit to the... Oh god, uh, to the right, but nothing awful. The front bumper, I'm a little concerned, is starting to go under the car. Now, I'm allowed to use the node grabber to pull bits of bodywork free if they sort of get wedged under the car, but I don't really want to do it unless it is completely stuck. Pulling the bits of bodywork around can lead to a fair bit of damage that I don't want to 
add, sort of inflict additionally onto the car. Uh, God, it's crashing. I've got to be really careful on these landings. I've really got to make sure I'm not uh, steering the vehicle. Oh, come on, get back under control. Bloody hell. It really does go nose down across a lot of these, which is a concern. But yeah, I don't want to be steering when we land, because if I'm doing that, the wheels are much more exposed than if they're, well, pointing straight. So, got to make sure I don't do that. It's, it's tempting. It's like almost instinctive. The car's in the air. Oh! Okay, we hit the rocks there, and that... I've never not had it do that before. We hit the rocks, just bounced the car around. Very nearly fire. Ah! What the hell was that? What is... Is that the bumper? Maybe it was the bumper causing issue. I thought it was the wheels, but... Maybe that was the bumper. Or maybe it's the chassis is starting to catch. That's concerning, whatever that was. If it doesn't do it again, then I guess it might have just been the bumper. Got a massive understeer going on there. Come on, Grand Marshal. Uh, we'll bobble our way across there. That's no problem at all. Hmm... Okay, well the Shadow Grave and the Checkerboard are actually causing more issues than I was perhaps expecting them to in this series. I guess we'll have to see how it goes. Uh, I feel like I've got a lot more understeer all of a sudden going on in the car. There's definitely something wrong. I mean, it's, it's clearly poorly, but there's something wrong on the underside that's catching now. I don't quite know what. We're pulling to the left at the moment, which, I mean, we can deal with that, although that's bad. Oh! That's really bent the chassis up now. Okay, the banana ring of the chassis is occurring. I think that's what's catching on the checkerboard. Oh dear. Uh, yeah, okay, so that is literally on the floor. Hmm. Now I've got more concerns about my drive shaft. <laughs> the drive shaft, I mean, the chance of that getting caught on something is, is higher the more it's buckled in this way. And Dover here is just going to make that worse as we jump off there. Oh, that's a big crunch on the ground. I was a little bit concerned that's going to hit the front right wheel, because I didn't do my straighten the wheels up very well there. But we are across. We are fine. God, that's another huge crunch for the Grand Marshal. Still okay, though. We're still okay. The suspension's in one piece. Steering's still working. God, I had to just let go of the steering across there. Uh, if you leave it too late to let go of the steering, you've not got the car under control as good as you can, but you don't want to be, well, yeah, just steering it. It lands, pretty much. It's a fine, a fine margin, this jump. Okay, it's flown nice and level that time around. We needed that, because I didn't need any more damage going on the front of the car, if I could help it, really. Uh, what are we across there? Okay, not too bad. We're really, again, it's just trying to get the car under control. It's like the back end is bouncing. I mean, that's not really surprising. We've lost all front suspension by the looks of it. Uh, it doesn't really look like it's got any suspension travel. The back is okay for the moment. As is generally the way, the front of the cars take the damage. The back is, on the most part, quite safe. Uh, okay, we're through the water section. No issues this time around. What does the checkerboard like? Oh, it sounds bad. It's definitely hitting bits of the car on it. I mean, the good news is it's not got worse this lap around. And we've seen this a little bit before, and the sign of a good surviving car is, you know, if it's if it's taken that early battering and then for a few laps or a few corners, it's, it's not really getting worse, then, you know, that's a good sign. It's got to this kind of level of damage and hopefully won't get much worse. Oh, spin as we go. I didn't quite get it as well through there this time around, but that's fine. And we're across the speed bumps here. No problem. Yeah, so maybe things have just bent a little bit away from where they were in trouble. Or maybe whatever was hitting has been pushed out of the way from the constant crashes. Difficult to know. All right, here we go. Across the jump. Oh, dear. That felt painful. Amazingly, the radiator's still in one piece. Okay, issues we've got. Uh... Not all four wheels can be on the ground at one point, I don't think. That front wheel is actually a lot of the time in the air. Uh, and when it's not in the air, then we have one of the rear wheels in the air, and then the diff just spins. So, this is new. Uh, the clonk on the wall didn't help matters, particularly. Oh, we've got no speed going up to Dover. Uh, I guess the plus point there is at least when we hit the ground, we weren't going too fast, but we hit hard on the nose. This isn't looking great for the Grand Marshal at the moment. The issue we're going to start getting is there's not much left to absorb any damage at the front. It's all being pushed back. It's, you know, if the bodywork's taking damage, that's good. It's not something else of the car, the suspension or the wheel axles or something like that. But this is now lost. And the wheels are pretty much what's hitting the floor. Oh, come on. Come on, there we go. We've made it across to another lap. Come on, get back landed. There we go. If we could just bend the chassis back so all the wheels can touch the ground at once, that would be good. Oh, God. 
doesn't sound healthy, does it? Across there. It's still going, though. It's still going. That front right is looking real suspect at the moment. The water... I mean, the Shadow Grave... Oh, we can... Um, it's done more damage to cars than I've realised at times. The checkerboard... The checkerboard is definitely a very known uh, level of damage, if you like. Are we okay? Let's hit. No, not really. <laughs> Exhaust has come off, so I mean that's a sign of how damaged the front of the car is getting. The exhaust has been torn off on the checkerboard. That's how low the front end is getting. The car's wiggling, it's moving around through here. Toblerone's... Oh, too much oversteer. But it is across them. A little bit of a clonk halfway through, but it is across. Into the spinners we head. Carefully does it again. Not really had much steering down. Amazingly, despite how wrecked the car is, not really had all that much in the way of steering damage. Somehow. I don't quite know how we got to that. Got away with that, but there we go. Right. Shafted. Are we going to be okay over here? The car is pulling around a lot. I don't kind of angle it. There goes the radiator. Okay, well, I guess there was only a matter of time until that started getting whacked, considering the level of damage at the front of the car. Overheating for this? It does depend. There are varying degrees of radiator damage. You can have one hit that's catastrophic, or you can have a very slow leak. And with the water section here helping cool the cars, it's not a you know immediate death sentence. We'll have to wait and see how it goes. That's not great. Still, it lives. I don't know how it's living through. The I don't know how it's not broken those wheels because it's hit them hard now a few times. You know the odd the odd surviving, getting away with it, sure, but. Some of these have been pretty nasty, and the front is so low to the ground. It's got to have nothing left to absorb the impacts across here. Surely, surely it can't keep absorbing the impacts like that anyway. Steering has got worse this lap. It's pulling more and more to the right now, but it's still very manageable. Is it going to start flying wonky off of the jumps? No, it's still all good. God, be careful. It's, it's not a consistent pull that it's got going on. Oh. Fine across there. It's not a consistent pull to the side it's got. It's... Oh, is that getting even pushed even higher up? I'm not sure. <laughs> it's doing... It's, oh, it's doing well, the Grand Marshal. If I go on the brakes, it has some weird fun times as well, so that's something to look out for. Oh, don't want to slide into there. I don't have the steering to really aim the car properly anymore. Oh, ow. That felt painful. Is so low to the ground. I don't know how it's going across. I guess it's helping it. hits the first checkerboard, it slows it down, and if that doesn't tear the car apart, it's then not going quick enough to really wreck it on the subsequent ones. Toblerones. We're actually better across there than we've been for a little while, as the cars get more broken. Uh, the ran the steering, like, suddenly turning could be an issue through here. Thankfully not. We are through once more. Lovely. More clonks across the, uh, around the carousel there. But nothing much worse. Okay, temperature is starting to rise and the, the shadow grave didn't cool it this much on this lap. Just going to aim the car the right direction. That's bad news. Still good? Somehow, yes. <laughs> I'm fighting so much for control. Trying to get it off a jump straight is really, really difficult. It's just, it, the car is wanting to veer from side to side, which is understandable with the level of damage. It just means trying to aim the car off of a ramp is somewhat difficult. Up here is a little more straightforward. How are we doing? Still got steering? Looks like it. Okay, Grand Marshal. Yeah, it's had these couple of laps now where aside from the radiators going... Radiator or radiator going? It's not got worse. Okay, and that's, that's helpful when it can get to this level where it isn't actually really affecting itself all that much more. That's a big spin for the car. Uh, we will spin it around. It's a time we didn't really need to waste to try to get it going again for temperature reasons. But I guess we're slower for this jump. That's something. Piston rings damaged. I'm not sure the water's going to do enough here. I'm not, we might not even make it there. Uh, it's going to be close. The car's taken a battering now. It's another clonk across there. Oh god, it steers randomly. This is you're going around a corner and you're never quite sure when it's suddenly going to veer off. Oh, like that. Thankfully, I guess across these sort of tabletops, if it's if I'm having to be slow, it's not really. I have to be a little bit careful because it's bouncing around. It's not really doing too heavier an impact. Across the potholes we go with no major issues. Shadow grave. 
help cool the car down a little bit. God, it doesn't steer across that section anymore. Oh, it doesn't feel good, does it? <laughs> oh, oh, okay, we have lost a wheel. No, have we lost a wheel? Okay, it has lost a wheel of steering. Now, the rule is I am allowed to rescue the car uh, to an extent. It does still at least have one wheel that is doing steering, so I didn't realise the steering had failed going into that section. I'm not sure whether it took it off at the water or at uh, checkerboard, but it has now lost a wheel. Oh, we're going towards the spinners with a very poorly car that doesn't steer properly. <laughs> Can I get this through the spinners is a good question. Uh, we are clonking our way across the Toblerones here. If that wheel can stay pointing the direction I need it to, we'll be okay. But it's got to stay pointing the direction I need it to through this section. Oh, it's a little bit of a hurry up pat on the way through, but it is through at least. Guy doesn't steer any more to the left at all. Clonks on the uh, carousel. Right. Shafted, this could be the end of the Grand Marshal, if I'm honest with you. Doesn't steer very well if it lands on that front corner, which is, I can't steer the car away, it's, the engine's dying. I think that might have taken out the other wheel in terms of the steering. Do I have a wheel that still steers? No, I do not. <laughs> to answer your question, oh no, oh okay, it can still drive I guess a little bit. Technically speaking, it's not counted out in that it is... No, it does have a wheel that steers! <gasps> it still steers! Very, very badly. I was sure that that wheel was gone. I was sure that, that wheel was flapping around uselessly, but it still steers. If we go nose into the wall, that will be us done for, because we can't pull it away from that, but it does still have some steering. That wheel is hanging on by a thread, and that isn't going to help it if we bump it like that too many times. Uh, surely this can't keep going for much. I mean, the engine's going to expire at some point, I would expect. I grab the handbrake, and it just turns me towards the wall. Uh, I mean... I, 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 we're going to fall. I can't get it over the Dover jump here. We're going to fall off if we can't make the. <laughs> that is going to be <laughs> steering. <laughs> I did everything I could, but that is the car going to be counted out with steering dodge. One wheel survived, but one it was not very not very good. I mean, you can see how badly it's pulling. It's just not enough steering to get it around the course anymore. It fought valiantly, and I will give it that much. The Grand Marshal put up one hell of a fight. It has ended up in some trees here but that is that is very much the death of the Grand Marshal and finally today we have got the Le Grand we're going to front wheel drive at time now this is the mid-spec one so 3.3 v6 uh, front wheel drive is always sketchy shall we say around this uh, kind of a circuit the front of the car, funnily enough, takes a lot of damage. And, well, the front wheels in this do everything. Power, drive, oh, hubcaps come off immediately. Uh, so yeah, the front wheels do a lot of work in this car. If one of the wheel axles get broken, you can say goodbye to, well, drive, basically. And that's going to count you out. So, we're concerned about that, pretty much. Uh, the Legrand, I think, is generally not too bad for this sort of stuff. I mean, it's going to have decent enough speed. It shouldn't have too many problems in uh, completing the jumps. So as, as far as distance goes from those, uh, we'll be able to get some decent landings. Uh, I think the back suspension on this car is pretty strong from what I remember. So we might not see that go. Although we've not really seen many vehicles have rear suspension failure so far in this series. Uh, oopsie. Can we go and roll the car over. That will do nicely. Okay, there's a little bit of damage from being stuck on its roof, but that is the price the cars pay for rolling over. I'm not allowed to pause or turn the engine off. It's the punishment for rolling, basically. Because uh, I can no grab them and, and flip them uh, back upright. What are we going to be like on the landing? I mean, this will jump far enough that it shouldn't do too much damage, but it's if it's damaging the front wheels, that's the concern. That's the real concerning part. Please don't go too far. Goes down. Okay, good landing. Good landing for the Legrand. I think there are going to be worse tests for it to come, though. Dover might be a problem. If anything goes a little bit wrong there, it's just going to land slap bang on the nose. Uh, the jumps towards the start-finish line, they could... could give it grip. Around here, it seems quite decent. These sort of bumps here don't seem to be doing 
all that much to it. Yeah, it's not very quick up here. Okay, well, as long as it keeps landing sort of solidly, if, if it lands, like, direct on the nose like that, it's kind of better in that it's not focusing all the impact on one wheel. Focusing it on one wheel is going to be where the car probably dies, so <laughs> I've got to try and minimise that if I can. Of course, it can still twist on takeoff or bounce awkwardly somewhere, jump awkwardly and snap a wheel. There's only so much that, uh, that we can do here. Still landing uh, fairly square in the middle. All right, Legron, we're not looking too bad here. That's a massive jump. <laughs> it's a big jump with a big bounce to go with it, but nothing too terrible happened in that. Kind of As, as long as the impact like that is spread across the whole car, it's not too bad. The exhaust has come off. Sounds very different, of course, now, but that's not a problem. It's not really going to hinder us at all. Great. Very, very bouncy is this car. Oh, God. They're vaguely solid. Wait, wait, wait. wait. What, what has happened? Uh-oh. Oh, no. We've got an inverted wheel now. It is kind of driving. Oh. I think that's going to be the end of it. Oh, the wheel actually <laughs> just fallen off. <laughs> um, well, that was that. <laughs> it was looking pretty good. Everything was going fairly smoothly. It was running nicely. We hit a big bounce. It was kind of like a big, big bounce, a big wheelie almost off of one of the potholes and ended up towards... Now, I don't know whether the wheel was snapped before it hit the trees or whether the trees snapped it, the bushes over there. Um, whatever it was did a lot of damage. It managed to twist the wheel inside out and then the wheel's fighting against itself trying to drive in the end as soon as it hits I just snap the wheel off I was hoping that maybe bumping the rocks down here was going to ping the wheel back to where it should be I guess there's a chance that that could have worked um, but I mean, we had barely any drive anyway it's like the only thing I could do to kind of get the car to do something sadly that is the end of it and it, the Legrand's diff is not going to let it drive on a single wheel so there we go um it's not the worst car that's got around here, but it certainly isn't a particularly long survival for this uh, for this car. On to our leaderboard, and it is a second place for the Grand Marshal. While the distances are sometimes a little bit funny, especially with cars taking damage, sometimes the distance counter doesn't work so accurately, it does go further than the other blue bug. Uh, steering, in the end, got the better. It's surviving really, really well, I have to say. After the first couple of laps, it just didn't really take too much damage, despite running along the floor. And, yeah, in the end, a, a, a wonky landing, and the, the steering couldn't keep the car on the course anymore, but that's a hell of an impressive showing. Now we do have to go a little bit further down to find uh, the next car, the Regency. I mean, it put on a good show, it wasn't quite as spectacular as it had been at the, the Enduro Drome. Yeah, it was overheating on that one. Very, very quick overheating on that car. It was even a couple of vehicles overheat crazy fast and some just, just don't really go for it. Um, but yeah, it did, uh, it did take a big overheating. I mean, the rear axle was bouncing around and wobbling a bit over the jumps, but never enough to, uh, to come loose, so yeah. A shame we didn't have the crazy rear axle nonsense this time around, but still, <laughs> it didn't do too badly overall. And for the last vehicle, the Legron, we find that uh, much further down, 24th place for that car. Uh, it got a little bit of an un unlucky bounce uh, off of the potholes, actually, that sent it towards the, uh, the scenery. And yeah, the wheel just got flipped, and in trying to get it sorted out, it fell off, basically. <laughs> Not the strongest. I was worried about the wheel axles. I just didn't expect the wheel itself to ping off. Uh, but there we go. That was the end of the uh, end of the Legron. And that is going to be the end of this video. As ever, I shall link all my tools in the description so you can download them and have a go with them yourself. That, though, is going to be it from me. Thank you all very much for watching. And until next time, a uh, goodbye.